Welcome to Snowflake 101. In this video, we will be going over virtual warehouses. A virtual warehouse is a Snowflake compute cluster consisting of CPU, memory, and temporary storage. Warehouses are required to run queries as well as the DML operations. A virtual warehouse is defined by the size or the type of the warehouse. And the size could vary from extra small to small and all the way up to 6XL. And the type could be a standard one or a Snowpark optimized warehouse. A Snowpark optimized warehouses are used and recommended for memory intensive workloads, such as ML training use cases. And the Snowpark optimized ones come with 16 times more memory than the standard ones. Virtual warehouses can be started or stopped at any time. A warehouse can be set to automatically resume or suspend based on the activity. By default, auto suspend and auto resume are enabled. Now, let's dive into query performance and how it varies with the size of the warehouse. As the queries are submitted, the warehouse calculates and reserves the compute resources needed to process each query. If it does not have enough remaining resources to process a query, it is queued, waiting for the resources to be available. In such a case, you can resize the warehouse and provision more compute resources without any downtime. That is, the compute resources are vertically scaled. These newly provisioned resources do not impact the execution of already running query. These resources will be available for the queued or newly submitted queries. So the warehouse size can impact the query execution time, particularly for larger and more complex queries. For smaller and basic queries, larger warehouse size does not necessarily mean faster execution times. Now, let us understand how virtual warehouses work with concurrent queries. Multi-cluster warehouses are best utilized for scaling resources to improve the query and user concurrency. With multi-cluster warehouses, Snowflake supports allocating additional clusters to make a large pool of compute resources available. That is, horizontal scaling of compute clusters are done here. So these multi-cluster warehouses can be created in two modes. One, in auto-scale mode, warehouses are dynamically started and stopped to run fluctuating workloads. In the maximized mode, you can manually set the capacity of the warehouse by increasing or decreasing the number of clusters. Another way to optimize your query execution time is to enable query acceleration service on your virtual warehouse. When you enable query acceleration service on a warehouse, it offloads portions of query processing work to shared compute resources that are provided by the service. However, not all queries can be accelerated. Now, let us understand how Snowflake credits are charged while using warehouses and review the best practices on warehouse considerations. Credits are charged based on the warehouse size, the number of clusters in a multi-cluster warehouse, and how long the compute resources in each cluster are run. Firstly, the warehouse size. Snowflake utilizes per second bullet. So running a large warehouse for two hours is the same as running an extra large warehouse for an hour. So you can run larger warehouses if your query needs it, but suspend them when they're not used. And let's dive into warehouse caching and how that helps improve the performance. To improve the subsequent query performance, each running warehouse maintains a cache of the table data that is queried. The larger the warehouse, the larger the size of the cache. However, the cache is dropped every time you suspend the warehouse and resume it again. So evaluate the trade-off between suspending versus maintaining the cache depending on your query constraints. The query composition also has an impact on the compute resources needed. For a larger and a complex query, the performance scales linearly with the warehouse size. Overall, size of the table being queried has more impact than the number of rows. Query filtering using predicates, number of joins, number of tables in the query 
all of these impact the compute resources needed. For better results, try to run homogeneous queries on a specific warehouse. That is, run queries involving similar size data sets and complexity on the same warehouse. Otherwise, it is going to be difficult to analyze your workload for resource sizing on a specific warehouse. To sum up, experiment with different types of queries and different warehouse sizes to determine the combination that best meets your specific query needs and a workload. So what should be the initial warehouse to start experimenting with? Well, for data loading, the warehouse size should match the number of files being loaded and the amount of data in each file. But for queries in small scale testing environments, smaller warehouse sizes may be sufficient, say extra small, small, or medium. But for queries in large scale production environments, large warehouse sizes may be more cost effective even to experiment. Say large, extra large, or 2XL to start with. Well, a quick summary of virtual warehouses and how to scale them. If you want to improve the query performance, scale up the warehouse by resizing it. But if you want to improve the query or user concurrency, scale out the cluster by adding more clusters to the warehouse. That is, use a multi-cluster warehouse. To learn more about virtual warehouses, check out the links in the description below. I am Vinod Duraisami and this is Snowflake 101. See you in the cloud.